Welcome to this week's episode of Marketing O'Clock, Off the Clock, with the one and only John Henshaw, the definitive John Henshaw interview, where we get into the journey of John Henshaw. Welcome, John. Hey, I am, you mean the definitive John. The definitive <laughs> John, the absolutely. The definitive John Henshaw interview, yeah. Thanks for having me. Yes, and if you don't know, which everybody should know, John is the senior SEO analyst at CBS Interactive. And you may have seen him as Raven John, at Raven John on Twitter in past lives, as he was formerly the president and co-founder of Raven Tools Software. And then like a phoenix, <laughs> I burst into flames <laughs> and, and landed at, at Henshaw. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's at, at Henshaw now on Twitter. And John, CBS Interactive, can you tell me a little bit about CBS Interactive? Uh, they're a big company. <laughs> I've heard of them. <laughs> and they have a lot of sites. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, I. Uh, they are, they're owned by uh, the network <laughs> that you may have heard of, CBS. And, and they have a lot of pretty awesome properties, um, CNET and GameSpot and all kinds of stuff that a lot of people visit um, and probably didn't even know was was run by um cbs but that's yeah that's sort of my my full-time day job and i love it and i work with a killer team of of other search seo specialists um, some people i've known for a while who just are brilliant to work with and um and yeah that's what's going on with that i, I get to work with some amazing sites and some really great people all right. And John has also just launched Koi Wolf Marketing, and it's koiwolf.marketing if you want to check that out. We're going to get into that in a minute. But today, I want to talk about the journey that landed you at CBS and at Koi Wolf. But first, I have a question. What is one job or gig that you've had that people don't know about? I think a lot of people don't know that I have a master's in counseling psychology, and I used to have a part-time counseling practice in Denver, Colorado. And how does that make you feel, John? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it makes me feel <laughs> thankful that I'm now in this industry and not that, because it was not for me. Um, yeah. I, I had actually known that, because I, I believe you had a post before, and, and if I recall correctly, I think that you had, had said something along the lines that you prefer computers over people. Or something of that nature. And it's not an insult of people, <laughs> of, <laughs> of humans. It's, 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 it's more of, um, you know, it's funny. I mean, you, human beings are extremely complicated, as we should already all know. <laughs> and um, it's, I don't know, I, 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 to this day, I'm, I'm still absolutely fascinated by human behavior and why we do what we do and what our motivations are and and how we connect with each other and uh, you know just the intricacies of relationships i mean all that stuff hasn't left i mean I, i'm i'm always going to be interested in that uh but but working with people's issues and problems and all this stuff was not uh a good fit for, for who I am in my constitution. <laughs> I, mean, just, right. I, I, I think I was good at it, but it was not what I enjoyed doing. And, and computers always have an answer. <laughs> now, now, now it, and it, it may be that you keep hitting the wrong answer and you can't get the, the damn computer to work, <laughs> but, but computers always have an answer. Um, and, and I think one of the reasons why I love what we do, I mean, we're pretty much in the same, you know, we may not do the exact same thing, but we're under the same umbrella is that it's just, it's constantly changing in a good way. Um, it's, it, 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 I am an extremely curious person. And, and the fact that Google practically on a daily basis is doing something different at any given time that's going to affect the stuff that that I'm working on or I'm interested in, and it might it might ding me, you know, as far as like traffic, or I might win from it. But the fact that they're doing this stuff is just so interesting to me. And being an SEO, which I've been for a very long time, means that I'm always looking to understand things. I'm always looking for opportunities to sort of usurp 
my competition to do something different somebody else isn't doing yet. Uh, and that gets me excited. And and, right. and also as an SEO, organic traffic is extremely addictive. It's like my drug of choice. <laughs> it's, it's, well, organic tra- <laughs> it's organic traffic. <laughs> and with no harmful side effects that we know of. Uh, except for you spend more time in front of the computer, but yeah. <laughs> like, if I just can complete or finish this i will get that extra you know whatever traffic and then yeah and then pass out <laughs> okay and, and let's go back so so you started with that that kind of masters in counseling psychology and what was the first job that got you in the door with digital marketing in general mm, i i think that it was i got into just the internet in general, making websites and that type of thing uh, out of curiosity, out of interest. And that was while I was still an undergrad in college. That was before even the counseling days or whatever. So I was doing that early on in, I don't know, 94 or something like that. And and I made my first site, uh, which was this family resource site. And and that was sort of my first thing. And, and those were the great days. I just stumbled into SEO back then. I, I was... Um, I was interested in family education and all this stuff. And so I just started writing a bunch of articles, built this site out, and and just figured out, oh, if I do this, I can rank number one. And I got that site uh, back in the day, pre-Mac Cuts, <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and pre-making their algorithm a little smarter. Um, I mean, I could I could post an article, and every single article that I would post would be number one. For just even that short tail term, and and uh, and it was all just because I was doing good SEO. It was before I even knew any SEOs. It was just I figured it out. Uh, you know, it was kind of a combination between accessibility and 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 just you know being keyword centric. Um, so I kind of stumbled upon sort of what I do today very early. Um, as far as my first job, it was at New Horizons Computer Learning Center, and that was in '96, I think, in Birmingham, Alabama. And and it's funny because there's going to be younger people who are listening to this, and they're going to be like, "What?" Like, because because they've always had the internet, as far as they've known. Um, but the internet was so new back then that nobody knew it, and and the people who were instructors and were teaching uh, at this global computer school, um, had no experience. And I, had, I had had a probably a good year or two under my belt of building my own site and sites actually. And, um, learning how to do computers. I stayed up till 3 AM just trying to figure out how to get the stupid windows 311 to work or whatever. I mean, cause it's, you know, that's a piece of crap OS anyways. Um, and, and so I just self, I was self-taught. I just learned all this stuff that just, it was, I had a voracious appetite to understand how all this stuff worked. Um, and and so I went in. Never, I had never taught before in my entire life. I mean, I I didn't know what I was doing, but I I knew the internet, <laughs> and and so um, they were desperate. They gave it to me. I ended up being a really good instructor. I ended up just awesome. kind of, you know, sometimes you just kind of have those natural capabilities to connect with a a group, and you know the material, and you feign conf- or pretend to have confidence. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 that ended up uh, being probably a good year where I really developed my skills um, and then grew and did more um, internet work. I mean, and all the way into the point where I left and then I started my own first little tiny one-person agency. Okay. And was that agency, that was Sightning or was that a different agency? No, no, that was, um, I mean, now wait for it. This is a really good name. Uh, I spent a lot of time thinking it up, um, but it's called JH Web Design. <laughs> okay, what was your inspiration for JH? <laughs> it was uh, Johannesburg, <laughs> um, Hodahara. Oh, I, li- I like it. it and I was like, that was really good. And then it was weird because later I looked back and it and it's the same initials as my name. It's oh, crazy. wow. I, well, it, I like how you abbreviated it because it, it flows off the tongue much better that way. Right, it does. It does. <laughs> I, I think I just said a uh it was Dennis G. I think I just said a horribly chopped up version of, of Dennis G, the guy who um works for the sports site. What's it called? I, I wish I was a sports guy and now I don't know. And now if he ever hears this he's gonna be like, John, you're such an idiot. Um <laughs> what's the what's the one that makes all the fan stuff? 
Fanatic. Um, fanatic. Fanatics. Fanatics. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. I just can't pronounce his name, but that was that was a the Hurahara is like one third of his name or something like that. Yeah, that, I think it's like that middle part. Right. Right. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. All right. Let's keep going. I, I okay. have no idea what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> okay. That is perfect. So you started with the firm JH, uh, you, and then where did you go from there? Um. So then, uh, I I ended up moving to Denver from Birmingham. Alabama. And that was for grad school. That was for the whole counseling thing. And, uh, but I, but by that point I already had several customers. And so I had started doing hosting for them. Um, and, and so they stayed with me because back then nobody could do anything. I mean, there's was, there was nothing going on in Birmingham to talk about <laughs> like the late internet. <laughs> <laughs> nobody knew anybody. So I was just lucky to even, you know, be, be doing that there. And so I brought them over. I ended up making a really good deal with a local, a locally owned ISP in Denver. And, and, uh, and they gave me a free, like free co-location for my windows. I don't know, windows NT server, or whatever it was back then, um, to host all my clients. If I would just write a guide for their customers of how to use the internet. So I, I wrote the really simple internet guide or whatever it was called um, for them. And I just got free. I mean, it was worth probably hundreds a month you know, back then. And I got it all free. And so I was just throwing everything on there. I'd get new business and throw it on there. Um, and, and so that was really good. That was, that was a nice money maker. And I, and I continued to get new customers and build new sites. Um, I also stumbled upon – I have a series – of jobs I shouldn't have gotten. <laughs> so <laughs> sort of, it, it, I, I apparently found the most desperate people <laughs> who couldn't find anybody and somehow convinced them that I could do it even though I'd never done it before. <laughs> and so, so and, uh, I'll give you an example. So I, at the School of Ed at the University of Colorado at Denver, uh, they needed somebody to run the entire network <laughs> for them, like their desktops, the mail, the Windows NT server, which I only knew how to do like very basic IIS hosting at that time. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to run a whatever. They were so desperate and had so little money that they that they gave me the job. <laughs> so so here's the question. I feel like we've all had that where you get the job that you had no, no right to have. Right. But did you deliver? That's the question. Oh, yeah. I was badass. <laughs> <laughs> I had these, uh, I had these two books, um, and they were, they were on, you know, how to run a windows and T I mean, I don't know. Uh, and, and so I, you know, normal voracious curiosity, uh, on top of what I'd already self-taught my, you know, myself up to that point. And within, I would say within a month or two, I had that network running like butter. I mean, I, <laughs> It was a mixed OS environment. It was Windows and Mac. I had it but her. I mean, and, and, and it was a big school of ed. It still is a big school of ed. And, um, and that, that was really great because not only was that, that was a graduate assistant job. Um, and I had that going. I still had my own stuff going. Um, and that would later become even bigger. I, I, I would later get uh, a bit, and by bigger, I mean I would grow from one to two people. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, a business partner who was a who was a programmer, and we ended up doing uh, we ended up doing online promotions for cores and iOmega when that was a thing back then. So we had we we had our thing going. But what was really great about that job was it connected me with all of the professors. Just throughout the whole school of that, even people weren't even in, you know, my counseling or psychology program. And, and that, uh, ended up, uh, I ended up building this site that every single person who wanted to be a licensed counselor, um, they had to take this uh, jurisprudence class. And so, so we worked together when there wasn't a conflict of interest, uh, we worked together to build that particular site and man, I made a we made the the teacher and I made a ton of money off that because we were the only hmm. online jurisprudence workshop in Denver, and we were the only one in Colorado, and we were the only one you could take twenty four seven. Everybody else would be like, you have to drive here. It's only given so many times a year, and so we were cleaning up. It was it was great. So so it's just a you just keep connecting and growing, connecting and growing, and 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 I would say if I were to, there's many more things I could tell you about, but. If I were to sum up all those different opportunities, 
it's you you keep you look for them you go for them even if maybe you're not even you don't even have that much experience with it but you think you could probably pull it off and you can convince them <laughs> to let you do it uh and and then and then you just kind of build and build and build and build and build and 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 i think that the the best way to sum it up is is that always be looking always be going after things and then build off the last win that you had and, and everything up into until the day, you know, today me talking with you has been building on previous knowledge and experience and experience. It's never a, I'm going to be this and that's all I'm going to be. I'm never going to look outside, um, you know, the purview of, of where I'm at. It's, it's more of what else could I learn? What else could I do? And then, uh, what ends up happening is you wake up and you're like, I know how to do a lot of stuff. I may not want to do all those things, but I know how to do a lot of stuff. And and I think that ended up helping uh, when I got to to what was sightening, which I guess we mm-hmm. could jump there. Um, but I want to make this point really quick. Um, it really helped from a, a standpoint of knowing the capability of others in order to get certain things done. Because even though I wasn't going to do that, or maybe I wasn't even the best at it, like I'm not a good coder. I knew what it looked like. I knew what it took to get it done because I've essentially touched so many different things. It's almost like the restaurant uh, manager scenario where you, at any good restaurant, you can't be a manager at a restaurant until you've bust the tables, um, you've waited, you, maybe you've done the bar, you've cooked. Um, and, and so when I look back on my journey, it is a series of, of busting the tables and and tending bar and cooking, uh, maybe the food didn't taste that good, <laughs> you know, or whatever. But but I understand everything that goes into um, all the different processes and 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 how you can bring it all together to get that one thing done. Um, and and so I think having that diverse background and taking any opportunity I could get um, ended up being really helpful. Awesome, <clears throat> fantastic. And and so then that gets to the point where you're taking all this, you're building and building and building. And at some point you start working for some larger companies, correct? Right. Yeah. I, um, the one that I worked for before I moved to Nashville and started sightening, which then created Raven was visa. Um, and then even before that, it was, it was about three years at a startup and, uh, that the startup was good. I'm, I'm built for a startup as far as just, I, I want to move fast and I want to do a lot of interesting things. Uh, when I worked at visa, that was uh soul sucking. I mean, and not, <laughs> and, and not because it's visa. I mean, visa is fine. I had, a, I really actually had an amazing boss there. One of the few amazing bosses that I've had in my life. Um, but it was, it, you know, it would take six months to accomplish something that I was used to doing in two weeks going back to what I just said about Mm -hmm. I'm built for startups, you know, I'm built for moving quickly. Um, and, uh, I, uh, I would say up to that point, even though I just talked about how I've done all these different things, all of the things that I've done on my own, ultimately I, up to that point, I felt like I failed. I felt like I, I had failed at pretty much every single endeavor I had done. It had just kind of petered out or ended up just, I was in more debt than not, you know, and, and, uh, and there's, there's things we could talk about another time about that, you know, lessons learned and that type of thing. But I was at a place where I think I'd kind of given up on being an entrepreneur because I just could not make it work. And, and so, uh, visa was a thing. Uh, There was absolutely nothing wrong with visa at all on paper. I uh, I love to be able to go in and they had a on staff chef that would make an omelet in the morning. I mean, oh my god! I mean, like, I mean, that, yeah, I mean, these are like good things. Um, and yet I hated it. It just wasn't for me. I couldn't I couldn't thrive in that. And so um, I started looking for some other opportunities. I started to look for opportunities that were more in the startup realm again, where I felt like I could kind of thrive more. And I just kept uh, having doors shut on my face um, because I had that counseling psychology degree and I didn't have any formal marketing business, you know, uh, training, you know, background. Um, I couldn't get past HR. I like, I couldn't, even though I knew how to do all these things, I could not get past, 
um, anybody. And when I did and I thought I actually had the job, then some sort of nepotism would happen. Like somebody would hire their nephew, you know, <laughs> I'd already been told I was going to get it. Like, no, the, the owner, the, the investor decided to be like, he wanted to put his brother in there or something like that. So, so that's when I was like, done, I, I, like enough of this. I just, I need to change. There were other reasons, other things going on in my life at the time, um, my family. I just wanted to change. And that's when I was just kind of, I have one more, one more entrepreneurial endeavor left in me. I just, I just, that itch is so strong. I've got to scratch it. I got, just give me one more chance because I think I can pull it off this time. I think I've made so many mistakes in my life (laughs) and done it the wrong way so many times that I feel like I now know that one best way to go about doing it and and so moved uh my whole family uh my whole family as in not my whole family but my wife and i and my daughter uh moved moved to nashville and i ended up uh working for these two guys in this in this old uh, he'll never hear this or see this <laughs> it's, it's politics now um uh nasty apartment <laughs> <laughs> how da- how dare I-, I take that as an insult to marketing clock i'm just joking right, right, right. he'll never hear it he'll never right, hear no, it. No, no. if he does he'll probably agree with me um <laughs> it's a long time but he had this nasty old little apartment and we all just it was these two guys and myself uh who ended up becoming my my two partners uh because they they uh, made me a partner and I made a deal with them. Like if, if I could get revenue to a certain point and bring, you know, a certain amount of customers and that type of thing within six months, I want them to give me a buy-in to make me an equal partner into the, in this tiny little thing called Sightning. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I busted my butt. I mean, I was like full on everything I could hoofing it. Um, you know, basically it might as well have been knocking on doors, uh, doing what I could. And I ended up well exceeding, what our agreement was and became a partner in that. And and then during that time, um, you know, we started to slowly grow it. But what happened was, was a, a lot of the things that become things, meaning where did the software come from? How did you end up going down this road? Come from solving your own problems. Right. And, and so we were a boutique agency. I was doing everything, including sales. And part of my sales was uh, I, I need something where I can quickly analyze somebody's site, just their homepage, and then spit out something and be like, your site sucks. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe without the word sucks. Um, and, and, and so that was the creation of something called SEO analyzer. Mm-hmm. And, and so I had one of the, one of my business partners code this thing and it would press a button and it hits the site that parses it. it I, I call it the original HubSpot website grader before that ever existed. It was very similar, you know, zero to 100 score, all that stuff at, at the time. Um, and so it was incredibly successful. I mean, I, I got lots of business from just running this thing, printing this thing out, and then and then either emailing a PDF or going and, and meeting with them uh, locally. Well, then I got the idea, why don't we give this away? This is a really cool tool. This is just something that might be good link bait before link bait was even a word. And mm-hmm. And so it became really popular. And then back th- way back then, again, if you're a younger listener, you're like, you're going to be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. That sounds so spammy, John. Um, but way back in the day, we used to have these little badges and they'd be on your footer. And it was what everybody did. And it would say that, you know, my site validated, you know, and, and that type of stuff. There's all these little stupid badges. And so we made our own stupid badge. And I think at any, at one point, we had like 10,000 of these badges on sites back then. It was just the best. And so we, um, we ended up just getting tons of traffic, tons. We ranked really well. We added a few more tools. One of them that, that ended up becoming uh, a key one in, in Raven, which was a SERP tracker. And we gave all this stuff away. Um, and, and we were starting to get business from out of state and just because we would rank for everything, but it cost too much. It, mm-hmm. we were using AWS in the very early days. In fact, we started really? using it private beta before anybody else could really use it. And, and so we were looking at this bill and it was just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's like way beyond what we were actually starting to make in revenue. It was just a total loss. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and so we essentially said, we can't give this away anymore. We need to find a way for people to give us money <laughs> for these things. And back then there was, it was like SEO chat and all these things. It was just mm-hmm. free tools for SEOs. And that's, and this was all very SEO 
focused. And, and so we, we ended up, uh, it was like, what would we pay for? Cause nobody will pay for anything. And, and that came down to solving our own problems. And, and as an agency, um, you know, we, we had Google analytics back then, but it was total crap. I mean, yeah. it was, I mean, it was so difficult to do much with it, let alone get the data out and, and be able to easily put it into a, a cohesive report. And, and so we said, you know, I would pay as an SEO, I would pay money to press a button that would give me a report on my, or, you know, just traffic in general, organic traffic. Um, that would give me a report on on the links I built, the the links that were built from my link building team. Um, that would show me where my site ranks on the keywords that I'm I'm really interested in. And, and again, back then, nothing did this. Mm-hmm. Everything did it maybe like one off on its own, but nothing made a report that had all of these things in one that was just as easy as clicking a button. And, mm-hmm. and so that's what we built. I mean, like that's what we made. We we made we converted the free tools. Um, made them better. Um, I will say that even with that, we failed initially uh, when we launched Raven. When we first launched Raven, uh, it was just like launch, and 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 what it was was we were just missing some key components because we hadn't really consulted with any other people or agencies out there when we made it. We were just looking at ourselves. Well, and it ended up being that. We were just missing this one report. We were missing uh, multi multi user support, and maybe like a couple other things. And so, fortunately, we caught the attention of two big agencies, one in the UK and one in the US, and they worked with us for about six to nine months to hmm. kind of get those pieces in there. And then we relaunched it uh, about nine months later, and that's that's when it started to pick up. That's when people were like, "Oh, this is new. This is different, and this is something we we need." Um, and, and then it was super easy the rest of the way. It's just been so easy and <laughs> at any problems ever. And, and it was just money. Well, that's awesome. And, and before we get into Raven quick here, I just want to say, I, I apologize. I, I remember that sightening site with that like olive color. And that was me using all those tools and crushing your bandwidth every oh, single sure. day. I'm it was sure. Thank w- you. one of my jobs. I had to go there and check it out. So a, we appreciate all the work that you did um, on Sightning, and, and obviously that's great that that transitioned into Raven. And then, when abouts did Raven spin out of Sightning? So it was, well, it was apparent really, I would say early on within the first year or so that Sightning would probably have to go away as far as an agency, uh, either go away or be separated. And, and that really has to do with the fact that we started, we it had a whole link management system, still does. Mm-hmm. Um, and we started to see people, when we would bid for, for certain jobs, we started to see our own customers bidding against us. Okay. And, and so the thing with, with Raven, particularly with the link manager that, um, that it has, is there's a lot of sensitive data. I mean, we, we yeah. had people basically putting all the things that they were doing and where they were going and who they were connecting with. And, and when the, they expire and all yeah, these things. Yeah. Yeah. Whether they're purchasing or it was a, some sort of other agreement, you know, just um, where they were in the process. I mean, it basically was, was a bit of a um, outreach tool and, 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 and it was sort of like, this is not good. Uh, mm-hmm. And, and the, at least from the viewpoint of, I, and I wrote about this like many years ago that I, I felt like there was a um, – uh, I just talked about how the, there's a huge conflict of interest in giving your vendor <laughs> all of – you know, exposing yourself mm-hmm. and they're competing against you. Right. And, and I just had a really big problem with that because, you know, I – I, I want to be moral and, and 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 make sure that you know there aren't any conflicts of, of interest. I, I want that's that's just a golden rule. I want people to treat me that way, and I want to pre- treat people that that way too. I think we're probably in we're probably rare for that in our industry, but that's kind of where we are. That's the kind of people we are. And right. And so, um, well, so one we, quick question on that, if yeah, um, but I, I believe at the time, Sightning was doing really well, right? Like the the agency the as a whole was, was doing well. Yeah. For the most part. 
Um, I mean, it, 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 it was difficult because it, 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 I was, my attention was torn Mm -hmm. because I really saw Raven as the future and that's what I was really interested in. And, and all agencies, as you know, um, require love. (laughs) Yes. And, and, and that's a love to the client and, and, you know, across the board, it, it, like it requires your attention to provide the best possible service. Um, we tried to put somebody, um, in place of me, um, somebody who had good credentials and was well-spoken for. Okay. Background uh, in psychology? That person? No. (laughs) Um, (laughs) <laughs> and and I don't I mean I don't really want to go into it but that did not work out. Okay. <laughs> I mean it, so while I was very busy doing my best to just grow Raven, trying to grab uh, development resources from the mm-hmm. agency to keep growing Raven, and then I'm just doing outreach and sales and support, and I was doing everything that I could do. Um, the and the person we put in charge of of the agency side um, almost practically killed it. <laughs> and, and and so, um, uh, you know, it's hard when you watch all of the relationships that you built and the customers you've gotten and, and then somebody just almost destroys it because they don't actually know what they're doing. Uh, right. And, and so, so no. So, I mean, the answer, the reason why I'm saying that is because the answer is no. Actually, the agency started to decline because of putting the wrong people in place and having such a strong focus on this other thing. Uh, All right. So, so at some point, it's okay. We still survive. We figured it out. There's a lot of details, good and bad, and all that that I don't need to ever bring up again or, or, or go through. Um, but the the short of it is that we finally got to a place where, uh, and I remember it. I don't remember the exact month or whatever. I mean, I remember the month. No, it's February. I don't remember the year um, where we saw on the spreadsheet that within this next month we were going to finally hit this mark of revenue where we didn't need the agency business anymore. Um, and so, and so, and, and that was when we, I, I wrote the thing and that's when we made the switch and we said, we're not going to be doing this anymore. Um, I, I think there's a lot that I enjoyed with the agency work. I had a lot of mm-hmm. good clients. I, I, I enjoyed the strategizing and the tactics, but because there was this huge opportunity, which was Raven, um, I was willing to give that up, if that makes any sense. Instead of to go back and try to save the agency, you know, by running it again or whatever, or finding somebody else who could, who actually knew how to run something, mm-hmm. uh, I, it was more of just, this is the direction we're going. We're, go- we're actually going to, we're going to stop this, um, and we're just going to do the software because... This is uncharted territory. It looks awesome. It's totally interesting. It has this huge potential. We've never done a subscription model. Um, you know, when you run the when you run the wow numbers, you know, I mean, you just it, it's very appealing. Mm-hmm. And, and so that that's the direction we went. That's why we ended up going that way. Okay, and obviously the. In general, this is a space where there's a lot of turmoil. Nothing's ever static, and there's a lot of change. What were some of the things that you kind of learned quick at Raven? I would say that we had our best years where maybe I didn't even learn anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my best years is when I didn't learn anything. <laughs> I like, that's a great statement. Let's get it on a shirt. Um, <laughs> uh, were the first few years. And that's when it was just hardly any competition. Uh, we were still... Uh, this will be important later. Um, we were still very much fresh from being an agency, so we kind of were, to a degree, knew how. To, you know, we had built our software to work for our own agency, let alone others. And so, everything we had done up to that point um, fit ourselves and fit other agencies well because we were eating our own dog food. Mm-hmm. And and on top of that, it was just full on just going to, you know, just doing PubCon hard and just going to all the different conferences and just being out there and, and myself just trying to get on sort of the speaking circuit so I could, you know, represent Raven, uh, which is probably how we met. Um, and, and so that was great. That was the, the growth was insane. Everything we did was really well received there. There, there really wasn't 
many others in the space. There was, you know, HubSpot was really struggling to figure out who they were. I mean, I don't think HubSpot figured out who they were till, and we're not even, we were never really like true competitors with them, but I don't think they ever found out who they were till version three. Version three is when I looked at HubSpot and I was like, that's a good product. Like that, they figured it out. Um, But we only really had like Moz and maybe a few others who people really saw us as competing in any way. Um, So it was, it was the early days and it, and it was, and that was very nice. I mean, as anybody would imagine, it's nice when you don't have a, a competitor that's popping up literally every week, which is what it felt like near the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was at Raven. I was just like, my goodness, like there's another one <laughs> that, that is, is like, I want to get in on this, you know? And it's just like, yeah. Um, and, and unfortunately for us, which, which became the middle and later years, we had some pretty rocky years. I mean, just bumpy years internally and Google coming after us and, and that, that type of thing. Um, but yeah, I would say the first few years was just fantastic. I mean, it was just, it was just hockey stick, awesome kick butt growth. We really were just building the correct tools, the things that people needed. Um, it was very, very exciting, very fun. Um, really enjoyed it. Uh, so that's, that would be the first third of Raven and we don't need to talk about anything else. <laughs> well, all right. That would be nice if we could right, right. end yeah, there. <laughs> so you know, you, you mentioned that that one kind of Google shift there that that was had some some pretty substantial ramifications. Can you, for people that may not know what you're talking about, could you just expand on that a bit? Yeah. So when we originally were doing our uh, SERP tracker, which is what it you know sounds like, it would track where you ranked. In the search engine result pages, we originally were using the uh, API that Google provided. Again, younger listeners, <laughs> they're like, what? <laughs> you mean Google actually had an API that would give you the rankings? Yes, it was a magic <laughs> time. <laughs> and and then somebody came along and destroyed it. Um, and so we were, we were doing it mostly legitimately and, and doing it through their API. And, and then one day they took that away which meant that ourselves and everybody else had to start scraping uh, and, and, you know, get, getting the ranking results that way. And so that's, so we, so we shifted to that. Um, we eventually, cause it was such a struggle. It's such a hard thing to do in volume to, to get millions and, and beyond um, ranking results. And we were trying to do all these other things with, with Raven aside from just, you know, getting the ranking data that we ended up offloading that, over to Authority Labs because those guys are brilliant and they figured it out and they still have it figured out. Um, but what happened was was because we became more of this reporting platform, we expanded into social and paid and all these other things. Um, we were tapping into all kinds of APIs and and one in particular was the AdWords API. So we started, uh, we, you know, we became a place where you could report not just SEO but you could report on your AdWords campaigns, and and so. Uh, I can't go into too many details, mm-hmm. um, uh, just out of confidence of relationships, connections, and stuff. But Google, somebody maybe high up at Google, decided that uh, they didn't want to allow anybody to have this data anymore, whether it be for privacy or legal reasons, or or they, you know, they're just unhappy that day. <laughs> I don't know, um, and and so they. Uh, we must have been at the top of their list. <laughs> the AdWords legal team must have been like, Raven's number one. <laughs> We're just going to go straight to them first. Um, so they came to us and they said, we are going to take away your AdWords API access. If you do not remove um, data, it was data from, SC- from SEMrush and from Authority Labs because they both use scrape data. And we had mm-hmm. contracts with them. We were pulling data. It made our tools better, that type of stuff. And And so... That was one of the toughest decisions that myself and my other two business partners ever made. I mean, it was just gut wrenching trying to figure out what we should do, and and I still to this day don't have no idea if we made the right decision or not. I just know what we went through from the decision we did make, which was we were afraid that this was a Google thing. We didn't realize even at the time, which we found out later, that Google runs independently of each other as far as their groups. Google Analytics is a completely separate business unit. And mm-hmm. Google AdWords is a separate business unit. And Search Team is a separate. And everybody kind of runs in their, in their own sort of um, 
pod, you might say, and, and almost autonomously in that sense. I mean, they, they only care about themselves, which is probably good for business. But we didn't know that at the time. And, and so we thought it was Google coming after us, just mm-hmm. all of Google. And, and, and so we were afraid that if we didn't comply, they would, they would uh, then go ahead and, and take away Google Analytics. And Google Analytics is key, <laughs> to, especially, especially back then, was key to our entire platform. The mm-hmm. whole thing had been made on uh, real-time access to GA. And we had integrated it into so many different tools and different things. I mean, we had we had really harnessed the power of GA beyond what GA did on its own um, right. on the platform. And so that was where the big fear came from, was that if Google's coming after us and they're just doing it with this one thing, then they might take away these other things. So we made the decision that we would remove it. Um, that was around the same time that Search Console had started, or Webmaster Tools at the time, had started to uh, give not great, but some ranking you know, results, mm-hmm. which they, call, you know, they, they call it positions, um, average positions. Um, and so we just, that was sort of like, that's what we're going to do. We're, we're just going to have to give this up and we know it'll upset a lot of people, but hopefully it'll stay for all the other things we do. Well, we lost 50% of our business in like two months. <laughs> yeah. And that was, as you might imagine, a bit devastating. And, and the other problem with that was a big part of our revenue was the rank tracking. So everything else was just great. Um, but we got a lot of overages from the rank tracking. We'd have people who would join, who, who would sign up, you know, just to use the system. But then they would go well beyond overages for, you know, or the allowances that we'd give them for rank tracking. And that was money. I mean, mm-hmm. it, 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 a, lo- a lot of it. And so when we lost 50% of our business on top of losing the revenue from those overages, Whew. I mean that that was a big hit, and then and and then at the same time everybody came out of the woodworks as far as um, competitors and were mm-hmm. just it was like a shark frenzy, is as if chum was thrown in the water and and these sharks hadn't eaten in three years and everybody was going after and and it was so that that just made it even harder um, because there's just a lot of like oh you know pissed off at Raven for whatever you know come over here and people bidding on our on our trademark and and all that crap. So um, those were dark days. <laughs> and and it wasn't just dark days as far as, you know, just a couple of months. I mean, it was it was a roller coaster ride. I, I would say it was a roller coaster ride ever since that moment. I think I think that when um, whether you want to say Google did it to us or we did it to ourselves, um, that changed the course of what would happen from then on. It just completely changed everything. Um uh, some for the good, some for the worse. Um, a, a good a good thing that happened was I had been working on the site auditor mm-hmm. for probably a good six or 12 months with a developer and our main designer. And I, at, it's funny because at the time, I couldn't get buy-in from anyone in the company. From my, I couldn't get buy-in from my partners. I couldn't get buy-in from anybody. They were like, nah, I don't wanna, we don't need to build this. This is stupid. Um, and, and I was like, this is the thing. I was like, I was like people don't want to run this locally. People don't want it to be so complicated. They just, they want it, you know, you can automate it and it will just crawl the entire site. And then, and then you can present it in a way that's really simple and tells them and can prioritize for them and tell them where they need to start. I mean, it's just like, this is what people want. And, and then I, when it came down to nobody had any other better ideas, then apparently I decided to listen. (laughs) I'm I'm not (laughs) saying I'm any genius. I'm just saying, come on, you know, like I got a good idea here. Um, they ended, they ended up building it, and and when they when we built it and we launched it, we ended up getting more customers than we've ever had in the history of the entire company. Like that's how popular the site auditor was. It was it, it I they call it luck or understanding the industry at the time, but I just knew that I wanted this and I needed it as an SEO. And when I looked at the marketplace, um, nobody quite nobody had something quite like this, mm-hmm. and. So I and and we could of course leverage the Raven brand into that and bring more exposure to it, um, and so, so that's kind of a that's that's a that's a nice that's a nice thing. It yet even though when we got more customers than we had ever had, we still didn't meet the same revenue because we didn't have the overages uh, that we had from the rank tracking. So okay, yeah, and so with that rank tracking, um, I mean obviously coming back the site auditor 
seems like it brought you back up. Um, yeah. Did you ever get cl- like percentage wise? You had that fifty percent loss. Site auditor, did it move the needle? Site auditor definitely moved the needle. I mean, site auditor was. Uh, I mean, that probably maybe saved the company. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, that was that was something that we desperately needed, and and because we got all those customers back and then some, um, that definitely move the needle. I, I think that at the same time, because we had really staffed up, I mean, I think the most we had gotten to was somewhere over 30. Um, we were, we were definitely probably over staffed to some extent for a little while. Uh, uh, ultimately we couldn't sustain that. We couldn't sustain Mm -hmm. how we had hired. We couldn't sustain the ad spend and marketing spend that we were doing. Um, and, and then that ultimately led to uh, it is, it is like the, one of the darkest days. Might as well talk about this. I don't think I've ever talked about this before anyways. And you want the journey. So prepare for the journey. <laughs> um, this is really moving quickly to more recent times. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it got to the point one day where I think we were at 20, one or 22 employees and and my I only had one business partner you know at the, at this time um, and we were just looking at things and we we're just like we can't like this is no longer sustainable we had pushed our debt to a certain limit and the revenue was just you know where it was we were still okay but but not in a way that would sustain any longer. We wanted to keep everybody on board as long as we could, but but there came a day where if we were going to treat the employees well, and we had always treated this company as um, not something we were building to sell, and, and it was really a lifestyle company to us. Um, the people who worked there, we were our friends, and we hung out with them and, and whatever, mm-hmm. um, which is what made it more devastating, was if we're going to give them, we can't go any further, the math doesn't work, we want to make sure they have some sort of severance. We want to make sure we we treat them the best we can under the circumstances versus waiting till it's way too late and then they have nothing. Mm-hmm. And so there was a day uh, where I had to personally let go of of 17 people. I mean, it is just one-on-one to their face. And it, uh, it it's like, I say it's awful for me. It was more awful, awful for them. But I'm just saying as an entrepreneur, as – as an owner, it's the worst thing. It's the worst experience I've ever had in my entire life ever as an entrepreneur. Um, mm. because you are affecting people's lives. They have families, they have kids, they have mortgages. Um, you have a relationship with them. Um, and that sucked big time. And I remember being in just this weird emotional and mental cloud for about two weeks. I mean, just couldn't even operate. I mean, just because, I don't want to hurt anybody. Um, but of course we did the best we could to get them, help them find jobs and, you know, where we could, it's a small kind of city. Everybody kind of knows each other in Nashville. Um, but that was really hard. And, and then, and then we, uh, we were pretty much skeleton crew till until, uh, and we kind of, you know, that was probably good for the company. I mean, as far as we didn't have to worry about bleeding out <laughs> anymore. Right. Um, we worked on sustaining what we had, and we actually started to make, uh, eventually fix some technical debt and, debt and make the product better. And we actually started to experience some growth again. Um, and we got really lucky with, um, uh, I would say we got, you know, we got really fortunate with the company that ended up coming in and buying it. Um, and so uh, ended up just naturally connecting with a business development person from TapClicks. Mm hmm. And, and they were looking for, they had actually, they had been interested in Raven for a long time. They just had no idea that my business par- and partner and I would be willing to sell to the right person, to the right company. And, and so that ended up being very serendipitous um, because they have resources, because they're an enterprise level reporting company, um, because they're backed by investors. And so that worked, that, that worked out perfectly um, it worked out really well for the, the employees that were still there because they really took care of them. Right. Um, and, and they've been making the product better. I mean, I, I'm, I haven't been with, 
um, it, it wasn't a good, I, I stayed there for a little bit. It just wasn't a good fit for me. I mean, as far as mm-hmm. what I wanted to go do in life. And, and I think I was kind of tired and burnt out over all the years of the stuff. I kind of went through a little bit. Doesn't um, sound like there's a real good reason for you to be tired and burn out. Right, 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 right. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, I need, yeah. So I needed a break. <laughs> um, but, but I think they've done a really good job of, um, uh, doing well with what's there, um, with, uh, hiring new people with, uh, trying to figure out mm-hmm. ways to, um, you know, make, make more money from it. I mean, that's why they bought it. So they can make money off of it. So, I, so yeah. I think they're doing a really good job, but I'm, i I feel great just not being a part of it. Not because, um, I don't want to, from the standpoint of, you know, I want them to succeed. I want Raven to succeed. Um, I just, it's just nice to move on and do something different. And that's kind of where I am now. And that, and I, and that kind of almost leads to the beginning of the conversation, um, which is, I love my day job. I mean, I love my full-time job. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I haven't, it's, it's, it's been so different and so fun and so interesting and challenging at, at CBSI to do the things I'm doing. Um, to work with the teams that I get to work with. So I really love that. Um, and then, you know, in my spare time on a side when I can, I've, I've started the coil thing. And that is also something I've been really excited to start and do. And it, and it, that really, uh, scratches a lot of itches that I've had. And so uh, it's, it's kind of where I'm in a really good place right now. I just, I, I, I'm very happy career wise with, uh, what I do full time and and what I'm I'm able to start doing with Coil Wolf. Okay, and I've got a couple of CBS questions, but before that, <clears throat> I'm going to throw you one layup here, just going back to Raven. Okay. That decision that you made to get rid of that scrape data. If you had a magic eight ball and could go back, would you make that same decision? Oh man, as if I haven't thought about this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's why this is a layup. So, looking back, my the uh we were three partners at the time um near the end it was it was only two uh, i'm only going to talk about the near the end one um scott every time we've talked about it he thinks it was a mistake he thinks that we shouldn't have given in and we should have um kept doing kept the kept the ranking you know rank tracking and the rest of that stuff um when i go back to it i generally i'm okay with it i mean i i I try not to live with regret and Mm -hmm. and the other part is i don't know what would have happened if we had made the alternative decision i don't know what that would have looked like i don't know if it would have turned into some sort of weird legal thing Mm -hmm. um with google i don't know if we um wouldn't have lost a bunch of business because of that also. I mean, for a lot of our customers, the one, the other 50% that actually stayed, it's because they needed the AdWords reporting. So I don't, right. I don't, I don't know if, if the outcome would have been much different. Um, certainly the revenue would have still been higher because as I was saying, we made more money off of the overages with, with the right. rank tracking. But, but I, aside from maybe the revenue would have been higher with equal loss of customers. Um, I feel like the I I, uh, I think we I like challenges and mm-hmm. I think that the company ended up making better decisions and doing really interesting and better things because of that that I also don't have any regrets in regards to that uh, I like the fact that the site auditor became a thing because of right. that because I that was a baby of mine I love that site auditor at least you know at least the part that I help create. Um, and I, I like that we got to build tools around Search Console and eventually tap into their API and one of the first people to kind of do that and, and really push it to the limits. I mean, that, that type of stuff is really interesting to me. And, and we got to use it in ways that nobody was using it yet. Uh, we were able to be the first people to make reports from Search Console data and nobody else was doing it at the time that I was aware of. Um, so I don't have any regrets. I have lots okay. of stress. I think I lost years of my life, but other than that, I don't have any regrets. <laughs> okay. Well, and, and so this is not from a regret standpoint, this next one. <clears throat> and if you could keep, again, let's say you had the same career path, meeting the same people, you still make all the same friendships and from the speaking and all that. Back at the time where you decided we're going to move away from sightening. And, and I, I had seen some of the stuff. 
that you guys were doing that nobody else was could even think about doing, even on the social side early with Twitter. Yeah, we're pretty um, early. Yeah. Yeah. Would you again say let's move from agency to tool? If you could go back again, saying that you're going to still have all the same friends, you're still going to be here today. Would you make that same decision? I would only because of the conf conflict of interest, because one of the core parts of our product was the link manager. Link manager was the reason why that decision was made. Um, otherwise, if it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for um, that, I thought it was unethical <laughs> to continue on having both. Uh, I, I probably would have kept it or split it off. I, that's probably what I've done is split it off. I would have tried okay. to have saved it and split it off because I thought we were doing really good work in Nashville. Um, and for clients outside of Tennessee. Yeah. I mean, I, th I thought that we were a good agency. We were smart. We were doing some really interesting stuff. Um, we were actually making the tools that we were using. Um, so I, I felt like we were pretty well positioned with that. Um, and, and if it wasn't for technically having access to other people's very sensitive data, um, I may have kept the agency. Yeah. Okay. And mm -hmm. so somebody making that same thing, maybe without the conflict of interest, would you recommend sticking agency or trying going full on SaaS? Oh, SaaS is number one. It's, it's like in my heart now. Uh, I love okay. SaaS. I mean, I mean, SaaS is, is number one for me because I like to create things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a agency and, and SaaS are just very different things. I mean, agency is a lot of um, relationship management. It's a, there are people which you might be one of them who are just made to, you're like, nope, no one. <laughs> you are. Oh, we can't say this. Can't even air this. Um, um, no, that you have to have uh, the right people who like to manage clients, who enjoy the relationship building, who um, get excited about delivering you know, pretty killer results that, you know what, you came to us, we told you we were experts in this, and now we've doubled your revenue, you know, for whatever <laughs> company type company you're doing or e-commerce or whatever. Um, I think there's a lot that's exciting about agencies. If you do it well, if you know how to do it well and you have the right people agency all the way. And I would say most of my friends in this industry are in agencies. I mean like, and they're smart and they love it and they do a great job. Um, but for me, it's almost like the counseling thing. Right. Um, agencies is to counseling. <laughs> you know, as, <laughs> As as uh, SaaS is to computers, <laughs> do that. So so I I love creating software. I I, I love the um, concept of how software can scale, and and I love the subscription model. Okay, great. So we're a little bit up on it here. I'm gonna fly through a few more questions. Okay, so and you recently launched Koi Wolf Marketing, and you can get there at koiwolf.marketing. Can you tell me a little bit about Koi Wolf, why you launched it, and really who would be the right person for Koi Wolf? Yeah, so I like to write. I'm always curious, and I'm generally thinking about the future of digital marketing. And when I look at what's out there, I'm very unhappy. As a consumer, I'm, I, I do not like um, the the typical sites that we all kind of know, and I'm not going to mention the names because I have friends there, and I still read them. Um, but I don't like the user experience. I don't like the quality of the writing. Um, I or, or the or the lack of depth of the writing. I it just all of it really bothers me. the The best news that I I will typically get or best information I'll get is going to be from a blog from somebody who is just really smart and knows, knows what they're talking about. So, you know, a good example of that would be somebody like uh, AJ Cohn um, or, you know, or, or somebody who just they're in the trenches. They don't write often enough, which is really frustrating. Um, but when they do, you're just like, oh, yeah, that I got something from that, if not many things. And so, that is uh, a lot of that is the motivation behind starting Koi Wolf. The the other motivation is that I've always wanted to build um, a essentially a private community of like minded people um, who where it's not in the the public form of Twitter or a Facebook group, which which benefits from you know it's it, if it's not on there then. It's private. And nobody's trying to advertise, you know, to you or use your information or what you're talking about. So that's that's one plus. Um, the other thing is, if it's private, nobody needs 
to posture. You know, they don't. There's so many a holes on <laughs> on Twitter where you know, one person says something and then like everybody comes along and just picks them apart, and, or you know, or says something stupid or jerky or whatever. And it's just, uh, you know, it does nothing for us. It does nothing for the industry. It, it doesn't push us forward at all. And so, I also wanted to have a, a place that. Uh, is I don't want to say the word safe. I mean, it's just you know, it's, but it's adult. <laughs> I mean, it's, just, <laughs> it's an adult conversation, and <laughs> and people aren't treating each other like crap. And you can have a good debate and discussion um, while being respectful uh, to another person. So that that's a piece of it. Uh, I've always wanted. I told you earlier, you know, I like subscription. I've always wanted to do um, uh, delve into sort of publishing media uh, subscription model that's always fascinated me and and so it scratched that itch um, I want to experiment in a lot of different types of mediums uh, as far as how you communicate um, I'm gonna be experimenting with uh, doing different different types of storytelling um, with you know audio and video I mean I just I want to I want to test out all kinds of things and do all kinds of articles and stories to see uh, what I enjoy creating the most and what people receive the best, you know, how they receive it and, and, and try to match those up and see where that's going. Um, it scratches an itch uh, as far as I'm, you know, I'm a bit of a technical SEO and I'm mm -hmm. also very, very into um, speed and performance and things like that. So it's also scratched the itch of uh, I'm uh, this thing that I'm making is also going to be, the example of, of, of what I'm telling people they should do. So right. I, I have a site, coalwolf.marketing, based on Google's own Lighthouse tool, is faster, loads faster, renders faster, all that stuff, than their own AMP-only site that <laughs> they have awesome. for their WordPress plugin. So, I mean, it, it scratches so many different itches and, and keeps me and, and really just addresses my um, endless curiosity. Yeah, and the thing I, I like about it is you really get to go in depth with whatever you feel like, and then you also have a podcast too, where sometimes it, it's been you in the past. You've had a great guests like David Mim, John Ankoff, a few others that are really nice, just in depth conversations about whatever is kind of picking at you, and 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 I love that about it. You know, I think the first you start off with Gutenberg, and is there anything else that you've got coming up that you're looking to explore there? Yeah, I mean, it's it's. I have an endless. Just again, back to curiosity. I'm, I have endless ideas <laughs> of things that I want to uh, research and go down and and, and write about. Um, the one that I'm working on right now is something I've been interested in for many years, and that's uh, looking at decentralized net uh, social networks. So I I think that we're hopefully getting closer to this idea of of social networks becoming something more like email where you don't have to be a part of Facebook. You don't have to go mm -hmm. to Twitter. Um, and instead you actually can have the option to own your content and manage it. And you don't have to use Gmail. You can have your own email server or you can use a private one or something like Fastmail. Um, I, I see that as sort of the next step for social networks. I, I also see that as, as people start to, Look at the privacy issues and get more freaked out about it, and and hopefully want to wean themselves away from that. And and then I look at look at it from the perspective of a digital marketer. Well, what's the hell's the dig, you know that's gonna be the scariest thing ever if you're telling me that the future is going to be decentralized a decentralized social network where everybody's in control of their own stuff. Well, how do I market to that? And that fascinates mm. me. So so that's what I'm going to be writing about. It's it's going to be um, part educational. Which is, by the way, did you know <laughs> that this is the thing? And here's the history of it, and here's what's failed, and here and why it's failed, and why now uh, with Tim Berners Lee uh, with his new initiative that this might actually become a thing now. And if it becomes a thing, what does that look like? And what are the opportunities to you? Because there's a ton of opportunities. There's a ton of opportunities, um, especially if you're already on top of it as a digital marketer. There's also a ton of opportunities from an app developer. So if you mm. finally if you're an agency um, and you want to get in and you've always wanted to build that mobile app or build whatever it is, this is an opportunity for that because we're going to go back to the times of, of when Twitter wasn't such a jerk about their API and didn't crap all over the third-party app developers. Well, now mm. we're, we're about to enter a time when anybody can develop for this and may the best app win. And on top of that, nobody can take it away because it's going to be an open standard. So right. I'm pretty pumped about that. I, I don't see cool. anybody 
talking about it and and um and it really interests me so that's that's the other thing that koi wolf does is it allows it gives me sort of a, an outlet to talk about things that i don't see other people talking about that i think are are either important now or going to be important soon awesome Awesome. And, and we'll get to that at the end and how people can, can sign up. But koiwolf.marketing. And then there's also a podcast that you can listen to. I believe you released some clips and you can get the most of them on the website. Um, and it's also the Koi Wolf Marketing Podcast. And if we still have time here, we're going to run through really quick uh, lightning round where we have some some very quick answers. And first, I've got a little section here called oh, Getting Sassy. This feels like it could get me in trouble. No, it'll be easy. <laughs> lightning round. <laughs> the first section is called Getting Sassy. Because when I think of John Henshaw, I think of beautiful interfaces and software as a service. So we're going to get sassy here. What is the best software as a service um, out there today? Uh, there are many, but the first one that just popped into my head was Grammarly. I love Grammarly. I do too. Okay, next. What is the best digital marketing software as a service company? Oh my goodness. Lightning. So I'm, I already just got struck. Um, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> what is the best digital marketing? Google. Google's the best digital marketing <laughs> software out there. Okay. They have the best tools. They have the best tools. Okay. Very, uh, very neutral answer there. And if you uh -huh. could invest all of the money you have today and you could only invest it in one software as a service company or, or just one piece of software – what would it be? If it's unrelated to digital marketing, I still think Apple is is the way to go. I think they're still going to win. I don't care what their stock is right now or how many iPhones they apparently can't sell. Um, <laughs> if it were if it were digital marketing, and this is just from what I use, observations, that type of thing, the company I would probably invest in, and, and of course, after this is over, I'm going to be like, oh, you idiot. It was obviously <laughs> this one I should have said. This is the most awesome one that's happening right now. Um, but because my brain is so slow right now, I'm going to go with Campaign Monitor. Okay. I, campaign Monitor, uh, I see the ESP market really starting to consolidate now. And, and as much as I love... Uh, just to focus on emails, as much as I love MailChimp and some other people, um, I think that Campaign Monitor is is sort of on this slow march of acquisitions, and they um, they bought Emma, which is uh -huh. uh, actually Nashville based. I think they bought another one recently, uh, and I think I think they're sort of um, uh, they're going to be probably the biggest player pretty soon. And I was just at an email marketing conference in Vegas and. Uh, there's a guy who monitors all ESPs and everything, and Campaign Monitor was at the top for everything. They were top of really? deliverability, the top of everything. Yeah, so I, I wow. think that that company has their act together and has a really good plan in place. And so, at least from the outside, um, you know, looking at them, I I, th I think that they're gonna in a couple of years are gonna be like, man, Campaign Monitor is basically the thing. <laughs> awesome. You heard it here first. Yeah. Okay. And then for three more non-sassy lightning questions here, is there a book, a site, a blog post, something that's had the biggest impact on your career? You know, there, there isn't a book that I can think of that's really had a, a impact on my career as a whole, but there is a book and it's one I just covered on Koi Wolf that has really affected me in a positive way. And and so that was the uh, Paul Paul Jarvis's book Company of One. Um that is such a timely book for where I am. I there's tons of stuff that resonated with me because kind of like as I said earlier about Raven, it was a lifestyle business. I mean, I'm not I'm not really into wanting to build the biggest business ever and making the most money ever. I I'm much more interested in uh, being happy and living comfortably. And 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 mm -hmm. having and doing fun things, and so Company of One, which is I think is actually supposed to be published in a couple of days. Um, it really, I mean, it really looks at what I just said. It really looks at what does growth mean um, from a perspective of Company of One. It even looks at how to, how do you function as a Company of One inside of a big corporation. I mean, it's 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 not just you know so literal that it's Perfect. one person running a company. I love that book. Awesome. Okay. And in your opinion, you've created teams, you're now on a fantastic team. What is the most important factor 
for putting together a digital marketing team? Uh, I, I think it's uh, it's aptitude. Uh, not as much experience. It's aptitude. It's somebody who's who's willing to learn, um, and you know they ob- obviously have some decent you know experience, um, but they don't have to know everything. Uh, the thing I really like about the team I'm on at at uh, CBS is is that they are. They're building a team where everybody's really good at what they do, but they also bring something different from everybody mm-hmm. else, and it makes the entire team itself stronger. Um, so, uh, props to Brian Provost for for creating something very special. Uh, and and I will tell you, I'm 45, and one of the reasons why I love that job is because I learn all the time from my colleagues. I mean, we're, we're always learning different things. We discover things and then we share it. Um, and then we put it to good use and, and that's just exciting. I love it. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, respect, you know, all those other things come into play, you know, that you treat each other with respect and, and for whatever reason we have this weird magical team. (laughs) I mean, it really is where, everybody brings something awesome to the table and, and on top of that, they do great at what they're in charge of. And I I like working with them. So awesome. Awesome. Thanks for that answer. You actually covered the other question I had there. So you're at Henshaw on Twitter, the Mm -hmm. site where people can get all that information that you're talking about. And I can vouch for as well is Mm -hmm. Koi Wolf dot marketing. Is there anywhere else where people can find you anything else that you want people to read after this? Oh, no, everything I, I want anybody doing is probably the stuff I'm I'm publishing on Corewolf.marketing. Marketing. That's that's where I'm I'm putting all my all my energy when I'm not working working. I'm putting all my energy there and having the most fun there, and and to me having the most interesting conversations and and writing about the most interesting topics. So so yeah, Twitter Twitter is where I just say stupid things. That's a great place. <laughs> yes, and Twitter. If I had to cut down all of my accounts. I think you'd be standing in maybe my top three oh my goodness. final what? remaining folks. Can you talk On about marketing? Planet? You're super funny. I, I enjoyed Thanks. it. And, and it's it's a delight. Follow him on Twitter. It's at Henshaw. Sign up for uh, at KoiWolf.marketing. There's also the Koi Wolf Marketing Podcast. And John, thank you so much for coming on today to Marketing O'Clock. And it is now officially not Marketing O'Clock. We'll have all of those links to the handles and the websites in the the show notes today. Thank you, John. Yeah, thank you. And we will see you next week.